Waterless washes, guys, the title of this video, dry humping your paintwork. I'm just doing a comparison of the Meguiar's and the Turtle Wax waterless wash, two of the kind of like big companies where you can go and pick these up in kind of Halfords. I'm trying to do it in a biased way, oh, <laughs> biased, I'm trying to do it in an unbiased way because I am heavily biased against waterless washes. Um, I really hate using them. Hate's a strong word, but it's the first word that comes to my head, so that's obviously usually the good one. I hate using them. It feels like I'm dry humping the paintwork, using them as instructed, spraying them onto the area, using your microfiber cloth and even, you know, rolling it or flipping it a lot and then having the second one and coming back and buffing it. It feels like I'm dry humping my paintwork. It does not feel Good. all that light dust on the car you know whatever you think about all this detailing stuff whenever you pre once rinse a car even if you just do it with water you take off so much of that fine dust in the summer and in the winter you'll take off a lot of that road film and when you're pre rinsing it with a detergent you know a snow foam and letting it soak there wet for 10 minutes and then washing it off that's probably gonna be better isn't it um, so getting a lot of that stuff off and soaking the car and having the car saturated with water and then using a soaking wet mitt with loads of suds and gently working over the paint. I don't, it, I'm heavily biased against these products because when I'm using them, I can feel, even when I'm trying to go carefully, I can feel the microfiber on the dust and I can hear it. Um, what do I think about them, guys? And I'm making lots of notes. I'm not comfortable using them um, at all. Now, I'll, I'll save some of my thoughts for the actual full comparison of the video, but I'm not entirely comfortable with these products. Um, I'm going to use, just while I'm doing this video, I'm just going to pan this right down, doing this all in kind of... You know, the old one-shot wonder. Let's try and do this all in one go. Now, in this video, this car under my nice garage lighting is going to look lovely and shiny. It's going to look like it's perfectly detailed. Um, it's not. It's covered in, again, water spots and dust. From summer dust, we get like waves of it that come over. Um, so it's ideal. Well, I'll overlay the shots so you can see what I'm talking about. But it's not, I mean, it's not like, you know, massively dirty, is it? But that's probably how I would use these waterless washes. If the car is absolutely filthy, then, you know, you're going to be weeing in the wind trying to clean it with this stuff. Anyway, it just shows you I'm putting my faith in these products. So this is the Meguiar's one. Here's my dirty panel. And this is how I'm using them. And guys, as well, I want in this video... People that use these a lot, put any tips or anything. If you see me doing anything wrong, any suggestions, let me know, because I'm trying to learn about them. So what I'm, I've been doing, I've used them on, this is the third time I've used these products now. I've done two car washes, um, one on the Golf and one on an Audi outside, just to kind of try and learn a bit about them. I'm not using too much product, but I want to get the product over the panel that I'm working on. So I'm just kind of misting it on there. There, and that's enough. I can see it's kind of wet. So I've got the product all over there. Now, when I was using it in the field, so to speak, I just like to leave it for a little second to soak in and wet the dirt. I felt that was going to be a benefit. Um, so I don't know. Let me know on that. I've got a clean towel. The first thing is now, obviously, the maximum amount of dirt is on this panel. <sighs> So as well as like rolling the microfiber and all that sort of stuff, the most important thing I'm thinking of is pressure. Um, so I'm just gonna lay this on the panel. I'm less worried about this roll type thing. I don't think it's gonna make too much difference. I'm more worried about pressure. So this first pass is just scooping up all of the light dust that hopefully is inside this liquid now. And if I don't put any pressure on it, the chances of it scratching are hopefully going to be a lot less. It feels quite nice, but this paint is in very good condition. It's relatively recently protected. It, the paintwork is good, and then that dust that sits on top of it is probably easier to come off. On the cars outside that have no protection on them, or not, not the Golf, but the Audi's paintwork feels all rough, has no wax on it, no sealant, no nothing. They felt a lot 
more like they were biting into the paintwork on an unprotected car, whereas that felt really, really nice. So I've used one cloth to um, take most of the dust off, just like they tell you to do. And then you take another cloth and you're always flipping sides. That's one thing, let me know about that, what you feel about that. I'm now, I've got sort of, I can feel it's still got some product on it, but I'm gonna go back now and just gently buff. I do not like doing this at all. But, that has, at some level, delivered me acceptable results. And if I just, I'm gonna leave this all going, I'm gonna to switch to auto manual focus so you can actually see what we were kind of dealing with before, you know what I mean? Sort of slightly dusty, footprinted, and now, the bit we've cleaned, I need a bit of light here, so if I get in on that light and get the focus right, there it is. When you can see the orange peel, you know that focus is good. We now have kind of a nice clean panel, and it's not swirled up. Um, now, I'm just going to put this back on the tripod. Let's go back. Oh, get this camera up a little bit. Autofocus on. Now there's a world of difference demoing it on a car with loads of protection and minimal, minimal kind of dirt and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm going to save, I won't spoil the results of all of this sort of stuff. You can use these waterless wash products, obviously. Um, and you also have the rinseless where you use a little bit more water, like with your O&R solution, you can kind of get a bit more water going on, it's even spray the O&R on, it's sort of like a closer, it's less of a halfway house than the wash and wax, where like I said, I feel like you're dry humping the paintwork. Um, but I can use these products and not scratch up my paint, but I'm not so sure, like if I went and cleaned this wing again and it was a little bit more dusty, a little bit dirty, and I went in quite heavy handed, this product won't save me. It doesn't matter if it's the Meguiar's or the wash and wax. From what I've seen on the on test hoods and stuff like that, it won't save me. You can still scratch paintwork with it, which you, which you can with kind of soap and water. So I don't know is the truth at the moment with these waterless systems. Um, interesting, very interesting. It's one thing using them in here on the video. It's a different kettle of fish using them outside. What do you think about them, guys? Um, and this will be a good precursor for my comparison of these two products. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using them for a few more weeks yet, and I'll probably try and get my way through at least half of the bottles and wash a few cars with each of them just using this, and then I can go ahead and sort of construct and build the video and take some footage when I do all this as well, and hopefully do a good comparison. So thanks very much, this is a kind of piece of market research for me. I've got lots of thoughts, lots of biases against waterless washes. Will using them more remove this bias? Um, there's a few good things I've noticed about one of these particular products already, and some bad things, um, and it's gonna make an interesting video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, take care, this is just a quick one. See you soon on the Forensics Detailing Channel. Holding on to what I knew, but the moment's gone. Where was I when you?